We are nowhere near as close to as smart as we think we are. 14 billion years ago, and we don't know what came before. And our universe is still growing. In science, there's only one very important question. Why did the Big Bang happen? It's possible that the biggest problem is that people can't see the Big Bang directly, but NASA hasn't given up yet. In fact, the James Webb Telescope has taken the first pictures of what is thought to be the Big Bang. What kind of power does this camera have? What does this mean for the future of astronomy? Come with us as we look into this device from the future. What exactly, though, might this amazing technology help us understand the Big Bang? Before you can do this, you need to understand how important the Big Bang is. What is it about this event in space that always gets scientists excited and motivated? At this point, the Big Bang theory is the most popular way to explain how the world came to be. In simple words, it says that the whole universe came from a single point with infinite density and heat. Then, this very small point went through an amazing process of growing and shrinking. At first, this growth happened at speeds that are hard to imagine. After 13.7 billion years, it slowed down to a more manageable rate. Lastly, it led to the universe we see today, which is still growing. Even though we can't directly see the beginning of the universe because of present technological limitations, most of what we know about the Big Bang comes from using mathematical formulas and models very carefully. The James Webb Telescope, on the other hand, has changed everything. But astronomers have been able to find a strong sign of this expansion of the universe through the cosmic microwave background effect long before James Webb. Even though a lot of astronomers agree with the Big Bang theory, it does have some critics. Different reasons are put forward by some theorists. Some of these are eternal inflation and a world that oscillates. These different points of view show how scientists are still arguing about how the world came to be and what it is made of. More than 13.7 billion years ago, the universe was in a very dense place called a singularity that was very hot and had an infinite amount of matter. Following that, there was a huge and sudden growth. This sped up the expansion of the universe faster than light. Alan Guth's groundbreaking idea from 1980 was the first to talk about this era of cosmic inflation, which lasted only a few hundredths of a second, or 10, circumflex 32 of a second. This idea changed the way we think about the Big Bang for good. Soon after the idea of cosmic inflation came to an end, more common stories about the Big Bang took its place. A process called reheating took place. Basically, this theory says that matter and radiation formed the building blocks for everything in the world today. This includes atoms, particles, and the basic building blocks from which galaxies and stars would finally form. This process of change took place in the very first seconds after the universe began. A mind-boggling temperature of about 10 billion degrees Fahrenheit especially marked this time period. At this point in time, the universe had a wide range of basic particles. Neutrons, electrons, and protons were some of these particles. Basically, these were the core parts that were destined to change into the basic building blocks of our world. In this early stage, the universe was like an unseen soup that light couldn't get through because free electrons scattered light around. NASA said that these free electrons would scatter light, which are also called photons. This is similar to how sunshine scatters through clouds and water droplets. But when these free electrons reacted with nuclei, neutral atoms were made which are atoms that have equal amounts of positive and negative electric charges. This important change made it possible for visible light to appear and was a major turning point. About 380,000 years had passed since the beginning of the Big Bang. The Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB, is the name of this bright event that is sometimes called the afterglow of the Big Bang. Ralph Alpher and some other scientists first came up with this idea in 1948. Almost 20 years later, it was found by chance. On July 12, 2022, science pictures showed the Carina Nebula, the Eight Burst Nebula, Stefan's Quintet, and a galaxy cluster that stretched the light of things behind it. NASA quietly shared a beautiful picture of Jupiter while also presenting a study of the composition of the exoplanet WASP-96b. A few days later, scientists made an amazing discovery. They found the oldest galaxy they had ever seen in Jades. This very old space rock was formed 300 million years after the Big Bang. The JWST is farther from Earth than Hubble, which rotates at an altitude of about 570 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. It is in a Lagrange point between Earth and the Sun. Its exact location is at Lagrangian point 2, which is 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. 
It is set up so that it faces away from the sun. This strategic site takes advantage of the fact that Earth and the sun have equal amounts of gravity, which makes it easy for the JWST to stay in place. This gives people around the world and NASA new ways to look at the stars. But what makes James Webb different from the one that came before it? John Herschel versus James Webb. People often say that the James Webb Space Telescope is the follow-up to the Hubble Space Telescope, but it has some unique features that make it different from its famous predecessor. The JWST looks at longer bands than the Hubble, which mostly studies the visible and ultraviolet parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. In particular, it looks at things in the infrared band. And, uh, there were a number of reasons why James Webb was created. It was made mainly to learn about the Big Bang, its job is to look for close exoplanets and learn about the first stars. It is also meant to look at supermassive black holes and look for signs of cold dark matter. That's not all, though. Exploring young galaxies to learn more about how galaxies form is another way it can be used. To see the birth of a star, James Webb will have to look through the deep space dust clouds. When it comes to Earth, the JWST also looks in that direction. What does that mean? It will look into things in our solar system in great depth, such as Mars, Pluto, the gas giants, and some asteroids and comets. Following a different design from the Hubble, the JWST has 18 hexagonal screens set up in a honeycomb pattern. There are 6.5M between them. This is very different from Hubble's spherical 2.4M main mirror. With this particular arrangement, the surface area grows by a lot. Although the JWST has a bigger surface area than the Hubble Space Telescope, it can still gather light 6.25 times better. The JWST's shape is even more different thanks to its improved cameras and a 22 by 12 m sunshield. This makes the JWST the only telescope that can look deeper into the past of the universe. It is designed to be able to see back in time to the very edge of what we can see in the universe. In this faraway area, objects have a lot of redshift, which means that infrared telescopes are needed to see them. The JWST can take pictures of how the world looked about 100 to 250 million years after the Big Bang, which happened about 13.6 billion years ago. It was the time when the first stars and galaxies were formed. With its cutting-edge technology, this ambitious telescope hopes to give us new and deeper understandings of how the world works. Hubble's End In May 2009, the Hubble Space Telescope's last installation was completed by humans. The Wide Field Camera 3 was one of the last and most important tools they showed off. This upgrade to Hubble's instruments made it much better at looking at things in the infrared range. As the universe expands, light gets stretched to longer wavelengths, which means that the oldest things can't be seen in ultraviolet or visible light. WFC 3 made it possible for Hubble to take pictures of light from strange things in space. This included the galaxy GNZ 11, which was around 400 million years ago when the universe was only 3% as old as it is now. But Hubble only found a few things in this early period. A lot of questions came up. Were the few big, bright galaxies that scientists could see just a result of the limitations of their instruments? Or did they actually see the early stages of galaxy formation? These doubts were cleared up when the James Webb Space Telescope was launched in December 2021. Scientists named the galaxy Glass Z12, which is about 50 million years older than GNZ 11. More studies by the JWST showed that there were a lot of galaxies, and some of them may have been around as early as 180 million years after the Big Bang. This was really cool. Jen Cartel Tape, an astronomer at the Rochester Institute of Technology, said that James Webb can see many galaxies because they are bright enough. Everyone knew James Webb would give them new information, but no one thought they would find these things. Astronomers did not expect something else, though. The galaxies that were seen went against what most people would expect because they might be bigger than what was thought and estimated before. The current model of the universe says that matter couldn't settle down and form formations like galaxies and stars because of how rough things were in the first few hundred years after the Big Bang. But the JWST's first observations, like the SMAX 0723 cluster, made people question what they thought they knew. Erica June Nelson, an astronomer from the University of Colorado Boulder, saw big honking red disks that looked like very massive galaxies that were busy making stars. Six of these long galaxies, which are thought to be from the first 500 million to 700 million years of the universe's past, don't fit with the current models of the universe. Calculations show that the masses of these galaxies are at least 10 billion times the mass of the Sun. 
One of them might even be as heavy as our own Milky Way. The way this galaxy looks challenges the way we think about the universe right now. Because of these new information from JWST's cutting-edge studies, we need to rethink what we know about the early universe and how galaxies form. What amazing things about the world will JWST show us? Tell us in the comments and don't forget to sign up to get more news.